Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Burke County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Tuesday, November the 19th, 2024. Thank you for being here. Appreciate your attendance tonight and welcome. Madam Clerk, all commissioners are present along with the manager. Ms. Margaret, I would ask you to silence all your mobile devices if you have devices tonight that are uh, going to make a racket. Please take care of that at this time. And I would remind all speakers who come to the lectern tonight to be sure the red light is on. Please press the button on the right and that will turn the microphone on so that we can hear you and get a good recording of our meeting tonight. <clears throat> We're pleased to have Pastor David Bridges with First Apostolic Church in Morganton with us tonight for our invocation. And uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Bridges to come forward and following the invocation, We'll have our Pledge of Allegiance and our attorney, Mr. J.R. Simpson, will lead us in the pledge. So let's stand together. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful day that you've blessed us with. Thank you for the state and the county that we have the honor and pleasure to live in. God, I thank you for all of the servants that are in this room, all those that have dedicated their lives to this county. I pray, Lord, you would keep us tonight. Lord, as we enact business in this room, I pray, Lord, that you would keep our minds in perfect peace and harmony. I pray that every word that is spoken is spoken with grace and mercy. Lord, that you would bless in all of these proceedings and that in everything, God, that we would give you the praise and honor that you are worthy of. For we ask it in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. Just before we get into our meeting tonight, we're pleased to have with us the executive director of our North Carolina Association of County Commissioners with us tonight, and they have been hosting some meetings here in our area. I'm going to ask Kevin to come, Kevin Leonard, to, uh, to greet you and make a comment. It is a pleasure to be here in Burke County this evening. Um, I'm trying to remember what day it was. Um, I called your county manager, Brian Epley, uh, driving down from, I'm not sure where, in the mountains. And I said, do you have a facility in Burke County that could hold, oh, maybe 250 folks or so? And uh, he said, well, of course we do. Um, and we met at your Foothill Center. And he walked me around, um, and that was probably I don't know when was that, Brian, a um, couple weeks before we put on an event um, on November the 8th. It turned into uh, an event that, uh, to my knowledge, has really never occurred before. I had uh, one of the lead recovery people for FEMA, uh, pretty high up, sent me an email and said um, that that was the best post-event conference that he has ever attended. And we did it right here in Burke County, and it would not have happened but for your board, uh, your manager, and your staff. And I just wanted to tell you how grateful, uh, on behalf of the association I am, we are, that y'all pulled together pretty darn quickly uh, to put that together. And for the members who are either watching or, uh, or in the audience and are unaware of what a big deal that, that meeting was, it pulled together the county managers, the county board chairs, the mayors, and the city managers from the most affected counties, uh, affected by Hurricane Helene, uh, from Cherokee up to Allegheny, where I'm at here in, in Burke County, talk about what the needs are uh, and what our future needs are. And tomorrow, and the General Assembly is in session right now, um, and they're working on another package, and it happened here. And tomorrow, this testimony is going to incorporate the work that was done here in Burke County. It's a pretty monumental meeting that occurred, and again, because of your 
and I just want to do as soon as I possibly could to take it. And we'll probably do it again. I hope that's okay. And uh, we might come back um, to use your facilities. I also um, I know there's other business on the calendar tonight. I want to leave the podium, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay, just to say to you how much we have appreciated Commissioner Moley and Commissioner Carswell and their service to the state association. Um, I, I know that uh, elections change things, um, um, and, and that's just the way things go. Um, but I, I wanted to be here tonight to tell them that personally in this room with you, how much you mean to me personally and to this association and for your work. Commissioner Mo, we was also on our board of trustees um, with our insurance pools. And Commissioner Carswell is a true friend to me. Uh, more than that, uh, having served as past president of our state association, the work that you've done, Mr. Past President has changed people's lives and save people's lives. And I really appreciate you and your friendship and uh, with lots of gratitude and love. I look forward to working with the new commissioners who come onto your board and continuing our great relationship that we have with Burke County and working together on behalf of 100 counties in the state of North Carolina. Thank you so much for the opportunity to address your board first thing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And on behalf of this board and this whole region, I'd like to extend our appreciation for what the association has done to uh, pull us all together uh, following Hurricane Helene. Uh, the, the meeting that was hosted here uh, was tremendous, and I think it's going to bear fruit for our region. Uh, our state folks were here. We had some federal folks here. And uh, so we are certainly grateful for all that the association is doing for that effort. Thank you very much, and thank you for being here tonight. All right, gentlemen, we'll come to item number four, approval of agenda. I'd like to uh, ask that we consider one amendment to the agenda tonight, add consent item number 17. This is courthouse uh, GMP approval, guaranteed minimum payment to approve the agenda with the addition of consent item number 17. I'll just remind you, you've had this information to review, I believe, but I would remind you that this is uh, this item has already been approved uh, in our budget. Uh, this is just a, a technical matter that has to come along with those contractual processes. So with that uh, addition, I would ask for approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the agenda as okay. amended. Thank you, Mr. Mulvey. All those in favor signify by the hand. That is five to zero. All right. <clears throat> Brings us to item number five, approval of meeting minutes. Gentlemen, tonight we have the minutes of August 20, 2024. Board of Commissioners regular meeting. You've had those for review. I'll entertain a motion at this time. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. We approve the meeting minutes as presented. Mr. Smith, all those in favor signify by the uplifted hand. Five to zero, Madam Clerk. We have several presentations tonight. The first presentation comes from our sheriff, recognition of Deputy Dustin McKinney for the Advanced Law Enforcement <coughs> Certificate. Sheriff Banks, come on up. Evening. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, thank you for allow allowing me to be here this evening. It's an honor. Uh, it's my honor to recognize Deputy Dustin Thomas McKinney. Uh, he has received his Advanced Law Enforcement Certificate from the North Carolina Sheriff's Education and Training Standards Division. That award is awarded based on years of service continuing education credits, and formal education. And I'll read you the letter from the Department of Justice. Dear Dustin Thomas McKinney, I extend my most sincere congratulations to you for earning this advanced professional certificate. As a recipient of this prestigious certificate, you have demonstrated a commendable commitment to law enforcement profession. I thank you for your efforts 
I hope that you display your certificate with pride as it represents your outstanding achievement as a representative of your agency and as a justice officer with the criminal justice system of North Carolina. With kindest regards, I remain yours truly, Josh Stein, our Attorney General. And it is um, just to have Dustin here with us this, this evening is, is very is, is good. He left us about two years ago, maybe about three years ago. And because of some things that you all did in the past two years to help the Sheriff's Office, Mr. Manager, and uh, other county departments to help us with recruiting and retaining staff, um, really the pay raises that you all helped us with. Dustin considered coming back to the Sheriff's Office. We was able to offer him a pay that, that was comparable for his years of service, training and experience. The Sheriff's Office lost when he left because he had a lot of training and experience. The people of Burke County know this man, they trust him, he's a good deputy. And just having somebody that people know is out there in our community and trust is, is important. So to have him come back is extremely beneficial for the Sheriff's Office and the people of the county uh, to serve the citizens of Burke County. And uh, so I am uh, just tickled to death to be able to present him with this award. With him tonight is his wife, Tasha, and his son, Dalton. And uh, so I'll present this certificate. Dustin, this is your uh, advanced law enforcement certificate from the state of North Carolina Department of Justice, North Carolina Sheriff's Education and uh, Training Standards Commission. Thanks, sir. Sheriff, thank you tonight for being here, and we certainly pleased to recognize Deputy McKinney tonight and him on his accomplishments. And Deputy, for being here with your family tonight, our best wishes to you. This brings us to item number two. It comes from the EMS, Recognition of Employees for Life Saving. This is represented tonight by James Robinson, our EMS Director. Evening, James. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, very blessed to be here this evening. This is an absolutely humbling moment for me. Uh, Commissioner Burns, if you'll also step up here in just a minute as well. Um, as we begin this presentation, I've got a few um, areas of focus for us. So a couple different things that emergency services loves to be able to do. And I think that we meet all of these areas of focus that, that you as the commission and the community expect for us. Um, we do a lot within our community, and it very often goes unnoticed and unmentioned. So tonight is very, very important to me. EMS operates on four shifts with a 24-72 schedule. Despite all that we can do from EMS, if it wasn't for the 19 fire departments that we have within this county and the partnership that we serve alongside of them, we wouldn't accomplish what we did to, that we're going to recognize for this evening. So it's very important to me to be able to bring these gentlemen together and ladies. So if I could have the folks from George Hildebrandt come to the front, please. Mike Brown. As they're stepping right up here, yep, all the way to the front. There you go. If I could also have Saran and Gus. So as you can see up here on the, on. August the 7th, 2024, George Hildebrand Fire and Rescue and EMS were dispatched to a male patient in cardiac arrest. Upon arrival of first responders in EMS, the, met, the female patient was found, or correction, a female was found performing CPR on a male patient. The male was in cardiac arrest. The patient was defibrillated a total of five times and CPR was continued over and over per AHA guidelines after each one of the shocks. Ultimately, return to spontaneous circulation was achieved on this patient. He was transported to Morganton, 
where he was then transferred to Charlotte for further cardiac care. Because of the acts of these first responders and the crew that we have standing here today, uh, this gentleman was able to make a full recovery. He does have some complications, but we nominated these individuals for the American Heart Association's Heart Saver Award. And tonight, Mike Brown and Commissioner Burns will be presenting that award to these individuals. Standing in front of you, you have Connie Pollard, uh, Richard Patton, Bobby Craig, and then our two EMS providers were Gus Edwards and Serana. I'm not even gonna try to say your last name, I love you, but um, I know that I would make that horrible. So Mike, if you would present the awards with Commissioner Burns, please. George Hildebrand, if you will step aside. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Serrano, you can slide back up. So, Salem Fire. Donna. So our secondary recognition this evening is from a cardiac case that is extremely rare for paramedics and first responders to actually run into. Uh, quite often when we receive the call, somebody's having chest pains and, and we know it as a STEMI and we get to transport it. Uh, this particular call, the person wasn't feeling well, they were having some chest pains, um, they weren't sure exactly what was going on, and then when the Salem first responders arrived on scene, they recognized that this patient had an incredibly low heart rate. They were altered and things were just not going the way that they should be going. They relayed that information back to our crew who is standing here, which just happens to be Serana again, because she's really good at the cardiac stuff, and Donna. Immediately upon applying the cardiac monitor, they recognized that this patient was in third degree heart block, which is a lethal cardiac condition that ultimately will end in death if, if it's not corrected. Um, Serana recognized this and was able to begin cardiac pacing. So with external pads applied to the patient's chest, she was able to pace this patient and successfully maintain a heart rate, reperfuse and get a blood pressure back with this patient, and ultimately he was transported to Morganton and then transferred on for further care where he made full recovery. We're recognizing this teamwork because had it not been early recognition from our first responders and the care that they provided, and then the recognition by our crew of this cardiac condition, this patient ultimately would have uh, succumbed to their, their cardiac condition. So with great pleasure, I say thank you for the response that both Salem and George Hildebrand have had to change the dynamic for individuals within our county. So thank you.
Thank you. I have. Mike, if you'll stay up front, please. If I could have all four captains, please come to the front. So we have uh, a third recognition that's very important to us uh, this evening, and this is a um, very humble, bittersweet moment for me to be able to do this. Um, Mike Brown was, has been a pinnacle within our EMS service for, since I started with our program. Um, Mike, um, he is the epitome of an, of an EMS career. He really is. He has an extraordinary career of service and sacrifice. Joining Burke County EMS in 1996 as a paramedic, Mike has been an integral part of our team. Over the past years, he has served in numerous capacities from road medic, special operations team member, swift water operator, sergeant, lieutenant, and since 2007, he has been the BLS coordinator for Burke County Emergency Services, serving as the liaison between EMS and all of our first responders in the county. In my career here, two notable moments exemplify Mike's career, and they're humble that I get to actually talk about them this evening. During the first Carolina Wilderness EMS externship in 2011, Mike responded to a tractor and trailer accident where a vehicle carrying steel I-beams had gone over an embankment. The unstable load posed a risk of life or limb. Mike descended into the hazardous scene, rendering aid alongside an extern by the name of Ben Abo, who we all barely knew, to a driver who was trapped and tangled amidst absolute rubble. Amid the danger, Mike demonstrated exceptional leadership and composure, even ensuring his brother, who was part of the rescue team that responded that night, stayed clear of the load to protect their family from a preventive dual tragedy if something went wrong. The operation lasted several hours, and required unparalleled skill and bravery, which Mike exemplified. Again, during Hurricane Helene in 2024, Mike answered the call for mutual aid request to Avery County for a man who was trapped in a culvert pipe. Following a devastated mudslide, many of you have probably seen the article. Um, our, our sister agencies made national headlines with it, but Mike wasn't recognized in that, and I feel it's imperative that we do that tonight. Despite near impossible travel conditions, Mike and his partner reached the scene and found a man buried in debris 20 feet in a culvert pipe with water and mud continuing to pour in. With limited tools and resources, Mike worked tirelessly digging with his hands and maintaining constant contact with a patient for over two hours before additional resources and rescue teams ever arrived. The extrication lasted over 10 and a half grueling hours. Mike provided care under unimaginable circumstances. These are just two stories that I use to reflect the commitment to service, courage, under pressure, and to profound care that Mike has for others. As he, re as he prepares to leave us in December with a, with a happy retirement that we are all excited for and we celebrate, we can't help but thank him for the countless contributions that he has given to our community and beyond. Mike, for your dears of dedication, your willingness to teach and inspire others, and your selfless sacrifice to Burke County EMS, the people that we serve, I and the rest of Burke County will forever be grateful. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, and certainly on behalf of this board, we appreciate all the service that you provide. And 
I may be just a little bit biased, but I think uh, Burke County has the most qualified, the best EMS folks, best fire departments in the state of North Carolina. Kevin, you, it's okay if you tell that. <laughs> Commissioners, any comments from anybody? Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm going to thank all of them for the service they do. I don't believe I've ever failed a safe in a doggone meeting as I do tonight. I'm going to get a pair of scissors and run around with them. But uh, thank you for all you do. Seriously, you're a great group of people. Any other comments? Just real quick, I'd, I'd like to reiterate what Commissioner Smith said. I do feel pretty safe tonight. Uh, I have the pleasure on this board of serving on the EMS Peer Review Committee. And when I, around, when I was first elected and I realized that was an option, I thought, these are my folks. I mean, that you know, I spent several years in the fire service, worked as an EMT. And I will say that what you guys understand and know today is far beyond the any in service training that I ever had. I know what kind of commitment that was for me. And I want you to understand that I truly understand what kind of commitment that is for you. And I, I appreciate you all very much. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say uh, these good folks have been to my house several times, which I do appreciate and uh, very, very much. James, you're going to be right across the street from me now, so all you have to do is just roll the stretcher across the street to get me if I do some of those things that, that my wife tells me. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Leonard will tell you right quick, I don't drink enough water. They run me around at the association with a bottle of water behind me saying, drink water, drink water, because I'm had a few, few episodes, but uh, Kevin, I believe you see why Burke County is so great after what you've just seen early on tonight. That's the reason we love this county. It's the reason we live here. That's the reason we enjoy the jobs of being commissioners to try to help everybody we can. But if it wasn't for these people, it would be absolutely nothing. My heart goes out to each and every one of you. And thank you for your commitment to the state of North Carolina and especially to the county of Burke. Thank you so much. And I really can't add anything to what Commissioner Carswell, Commissioner Burns, Commissioner Smith said, but I do want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, um, which I'll do is tremendous. And it's 24 7, as Randy always talks about, seven days a week. And, um, and you are the best in North Carolina. So thank you. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And again, thank you all for being here tonight and participating in this recognition. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, yes, sir. We have some walking sticks. All right. Uh, gentlemen, ladies, come back and we've got walking sticks. Uh, I don't know how we're going to, how you want to present those matters. I think James had a plan. James has a plan. I should have known that. James has a plan. So if I could get the fire department to just cycle through and go out as well as Mike, I'd like to just give you your steps. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. All right, this brings us to item number three in our presentations tonight. We're pleased to have with us folks from our health department. We recently received the WIC USDA Breastfeeding Award. This is going to be presented by Christy uh, Shuping tonight. She is our WIC director. And uh, Christy, come on up. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Christy Shuping, and I'm the director of the Burke County WIC program, and this is Chua Zhang. She is our breastfeeding peer counselor program manager. 
WIC is the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, and we serve low-income families with pregnant women, new moms, infants, and children up to the age of five. WIC provides nutrition education, access to healthy foods, and an integral part of our program is to provide breastfeeding promotion and support. Um, all of these things are not just beneficial to the families we serve, but also to the local economy. In fiscal year 24, WIC participants redeemed nearly $1.8 million in benefits at local vendors throughout Burke County. Um, to further our mission of promoting breastfeeding, we administer a mother-to-mother -mother support program called the Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Program. Every year, USDA uh, honors programs that they feel have excelled in breastfeeding promotion and support efforts, and this year, Burke County was one of just seven agencies in North Carolina and 82 nationwide to receive the Gold Award for WIT Breastfeeding Excellence in, um, what is it? The Gold Award for WIT Breastfeeding Excellence. Um, I am tremendously proud of the staff, our program, the impacts that we're making in the community, and I appreciate the support that you guys provide us in doing that job. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. We're excited. <laughs> we certainly appreciate the work you guys are doing in the WIC program. And uh, we were pleased that uh, folks came all the way from Atlanta to bring that award to you. Right, item number four, also coming from the health department tonight, uh, Dr. Sarah Marr, Health Department of the Year Award. Uh, this will be presented uh, by uh, Ashley Jerry. Uh, unfortunately, our uh, health director, Mr. Scalise, well, had a family emergency, a medical emergency tonight, and was not able to be with us, so we welcome Ashley. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me. I appreciate being up here. Um, I do want to recognize that I am not Danny, um, but I do want to send um, the regards on his behalf, and he apologizes for not being here to give the speech that he would like to tell you guys about how um, we're doing and appreciate your support and all of that. Um, please keep his family and um, him in your prayers through this weekend as he goes through some things. Um, on that note, I would also like to say that I personally am very proud of our um, employees and our staff at the health department. I'm very happy to be part of this team and to be part of um, the work that we're doing um, between the leadership of Danny, the leadership of Brian, the leadership of the board. I think we're doing some really tremendous things and it was recognized and that was really um, a humbling moment for us as North Carolina recognized that we were one of the small health departments of the year. You know, we can't compete with Mecklenburg and we can't compete with Wake, but out of everyone else, we were named the best health department of the year. And that was really amazing. Uh, one of the reasons we were named health department of the year is because of our collaboration with substance use work um, through a lot of Johnny's leadership, through Danny's leadership, through the county's leadership, and some of our work with um, collaboration on some of our homeless efforts. So that was recognized and we're really proud of that. And you can tell with some of our individual programs, you know, we're, we're trying to do our best to put the health and well-being of the county at the forefront of everything. And so we appreciate and we're very humbled to, to be recognized by this. And we thank you for having this opportunity to talk to you about that. All right. Thank you very much. And again, another great example of all the great work that's going on here in Burke County. We appreciate all the work that you guys are doing uh, throughout the health department with WIC, just being one of the many things that you guys are doing, as you've already mentioned uh, in your presentation. Thank you very much for that. And, and we recognize and congratulate you on this award. Thank you. Uh, if everyone from the health department will come up, either on the advisory committee or medical director, anyone who has participated, please come up.
Thank you. Congratulations. Again, thank you for all your efforts. This brings us to item number five, Health, American Public Health Association, the W.C. Woodward Award. And we are, again, sorry that Danny could not be with us tonight as he had some special recognition. And I'll ask Ashley to tell us about that as well. Thank you, Ashley. So I don't know exactly what Danny would have liked to have said, but I do want to recognize how great this award is for him, um, just on behalf of being his assistant health director and recognizing that the American Public Health Association is a national association with thousands and thousands of members in it. Um, so for him to get awarded the administrator, the health administrator award is, it, it's a really great thing. Um, it shows that he has contributed to health administration in multiple ways and that the nation through this association has recognized him for the work that he's done. And I would just leave it at that. And, and I will say that he does appreciate um, this opportunity to send his thanks. All right. And again, another great example of the work going on here in Burke County, the folks that, that we have doing the, the best job that... Uh, that they can do for us and we certainly appreciate all of that and and again congratulations to danny for this special award on his behalf and again sorry that he could not be with us here tonight and thank chairman you. Yes, sir. yes sir ashley before you had it, I, I danny would have said danny would have all the praise and glory to you folks that are sitting right there and to Isaac and, and the board, uh, because he's one of a kind. He always has been very special, and we were very lucky to get him here in Burke County. Done. He's done great work. So that's what he would have said. And, and we certainly do appreciate everything he's done for Burke County. Other comments? All right. Again, thank you all for being here with us tonight. All right. This brings us to item number six. Board of Commissioners Proclamation honoring Commissioners Carswell and Mulway. Well, it's my honor tonight to uh, to make this presentation and uh, let me get to where I need to be. It is my pleasure to recognize two commissioners that I've had the privilege to work with now for a number of years. Uh, Commissioner Carswell, since since I came onto the board, I would uh, make a special thanks to him tonight for uh, taking a, a newbie on and uh, kind of mentoring me along and helping me get to, to understand what's happening uh, with all things commission oriented. And uh, believe me, until you uh, sit up here, you, uh, you don't have any idea. <laughs> you might think you know what happens, but uh, uh, it was certainly... Uh, a learning curve, and I appreciate all his time that uh, he spent with me helping to uh, get me <clears throat> on board and, and uh, moving. But I do want to uh, call your attention to the proclamation and just I'll point out a few things. I won't read this whole proclamation, uh, but uh, Johnny has served us since 2011, uh, 13 years of dedicated service to our community. Uh, he served as chairman of the board for four years, served as vice chair for four years, demonstrating a great commitment and collaboration. It's one of the things I've always appreciated about Johnny. Always wants to hear uh, from everybody and all, all opinions. Uh, the work that he did with our association and the 555 committee uh, through the opioid uh, litigation was tremendous. Uh, Johnny gave hours upon hours of his time to that effort and uh, we certainly appreciate all of that. Uh, public service is extended beyond that as he also served as our state association's president. Uh, and that, I can't tell you again how much time that takes. And uh, Johnny gave uh, considerable to that effort. And, and I know the association appreciates that as well. Exemplary leadership, tireless work ethic. Um, I can't uh, tell you. Uh, uh, enough how much I appreciate what Johnny has done uh, for the county and for this board. And uh, so with that, uh, Mr. Carswell, we'll make a presentation uh, in a, with a plaque just in a moment. 
And, uh, and let me move on to Commissioner Mulvey, who also uh, sits here to my left. It's been my pleasure to work with him as well since 2017. Uh, again, uh, demonstrated great commitment to our community and our county. Has served also as uh, chair of the board for two years, as vice chair for four years. Again, another guy that uh, fosters collaboration in everything that he does, wants to hear uh, what's, you know, opinions from everybody and, and tries to work together. Shown exceptional leadership and dedication in education, uh, serving as uh, president of Western Piedmont Community College Board of Trustees, where his efforts uh, have supported the college mission of providing high quality education and opportunities for our residents of Burke County. Also, Commissioner Moore, we demonstrates passion for economic development and tourism in the county, also serving on the Tourism Development Authority, where his work has helped to highlight our county's natural beauty, attractions, and vibrant culture uh, relationships. Again, his service has earned him the admiration and respect of his colleagues, staff, and citizens. And again, I want to uh, express my appreciation for my time working with Scott and all he's done to uh, help lead our board. So at this time, I want to ask Scott and John to come down front. We want to make a presentation. And you guys come join us for a picture, please. Let me remind you that we will be having a public service reception for both Scott and Johnny on Friday, November the 22nd from 4 to 6. I would invite you along with all our friends to come by, speak to Johnny and Scott, give them your appreciation for all that they've done over these past years to serve our community and our county. Any word from anybody? All right. I've got something written, but I'm going to save it for Friday. Okay. I just want to say it's been a pleasure serving with both of you, and I echo what uh, Commissioner Britton said. 
Y'all are a fountain of knowledge, and it's been my pleasure to serve with you. Thank you for everything you've taught me. Mr. Chairman, I just want to say, I'll keep it short, I promise, but I, I would be remiss if, it, if I didn't say what an honor it's been for the last eight years to be able to serve community and um, put your trust in me. Always the old saying, uh, leave something better than you found it, and I know we have much better. I'm proud of our work. Won't get in the list of accomplishments, but it's been an honor to, like I said, work for the citizens, but also um, our employees. Many of you I've become very close with, friends with. Uh, I was friends with some of you prior, um, but I've uh, become, I've, my, my circle of friends has really increased um, through a, the relationships with the employees and the staff. We're like family, and uh, it's been an honor and a privilege. As we see, um, Kevin's got to witness this tonight, department after department, whether it's health department, EMS, sheriff, we got the best of the best. And um, I'm proud of our employees. I'm proud of our staff. I'm proud of the, uh, what we've done uh, in support of our citizens. And, and uh, I also want to mention two other things. It's been an honor, honor and a privilege to work with some very close friends of mine, uh, relationships I'll always cherish. Might not have known several, uh, several of you as well as I would have if I hadn't served with you as fellow commissioners and some of my former commissioners, uh, Commissioner Abley, Commissioner Taylor as well. Um, it's, uh, like I said, Jeff... Jeff mentioned this earlier. It's, it's not an easy thing to be a commissioner, but it is an enjoyable thing, and it's been the pleasure of my life to do this, to be perfectly candid. I love it. But uh, one last thing I do want to say, um, you can't do this without the support of friends, but you especially can't do it without the support of your family because your family sacrifices too. The hours we spend here, hours at different meetings throughout the state, um, it takes a tremendous amount of time. Um, Johnny's uh, more so than anybody, but um, it is a commitment, and, and it, but it's not a commitment just for us because this is a passion of ours. We wouldn't do this if this wasn't a passion of ours. You just don't happenstance to want to do be a commissioner or, or school board member or state representative. You've got to have a passion, and um, so does your family because they're there to support you. They're putting in as many hours behind the scenes to support you as you see us out in public. And um, sometimes our, our, our wives can be our biggest cheerleaders and biggest defenders. And so um, I want to th say a special thanks to my family, but especially my wife, Laura. So thank you. I am truly humbled. I go back to, I miss my mom and dad, John and Evelyn Carswell. They were, they were good folks. Used to come down to Shoney's a lot, didn't they? And uh, they, they tried to raise me right. And I, I think they did, and and I miss them. I served my country during the Vietnam era. I'll never never regret that. Graduated from Valdez High School many many years ago, and uh, never thought that I would be in the political uh, arena at any given point. But but I'm very proud to have served. I'm proud to have been a law enforcement officer here in Burke County. I was telling the sheriff earlier that that's a very unique club that, that the advanced certification, I'm a member of that club and it's, it's hard to get to, but I'm very proud of that. So uh, what, what, I, what I'm very most proud of is I love my God. I love my God and I love my country and I love my family. I love my 12 grandchildren. I've got six great grandchildren and great grandchild number seven and number eight are on the way. So, I, I'm truly blessed. I'm a Burke County boy, born, you know, like I said, born right down there in Valdez at 100 Carswell Street. And uh, it, it's uh, very rewarding. I've made a lot of great friends. One of, the, one of my best friends is sitting on that front row there. He is my, I, I've adopted him as my son, Kevin Leonard. He, he and I have traveled North Carolina and we've traveled a lot of states. In this union, we spend a lot of time in Washington, D.C., working for Burke County, working to make it a better place to live, work, play, and worship. And I think we did that. I've not done everything right, and I regret that. But uh, those friends have meant more than anything. Special friends like Sharon McBrayer sat back on the back row. Very special. She's treated me fair. For a newspaper reporter, you always think 
that that's not going to happen. And the other one sitting up here, Marty on the front row, thank you guys for being fair. You've treated this board extremely well, but Sharon, you've been there for me. We've had a lot of deep discussions. I appreciate that. Isaac, some of the rest of you that are sitting out there, can't name all of you, but like I say, this, this is humbling. And my spiritual advisor sitting there on the front row, Dave, you've been there for me. You've listened to my phone calls when I needed you, and I appreciate that. I'm going to miss it, but uh, God has his plans for me. I don't know what they are. We'll just have to wait and see what door he opens. But we've had good, good friends on this board. We had good men, good women sitting up here at this dice. And uh, I will never forget that, no matter what happens. So thank you, citizens of Burke County, for giving me the opportunity to sit up here and do what I've done over the last 13 years. I do appreciate that. All right, thank you both Johnny and Scott. We look forward to recognizing you further on Friday. All right, this brings us to item number seven, scheduled public hearings tonight. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I do apologize. Can we get a motion on those proclamations? Absolutely. In fact, item number six, could I uh, have a motion to approve proclamation number 2024-17 and 2024-18? Mr. Chairman, I would be honored and proud to make the motion to approve proclamations number 2024-17 and 2024-18. Thank you. Commissioner Burns, all those in favor signify by uplifted hand. That is five to zero, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Now back to scheduled public hearings. This first one comes from our information technology, an ordinance changing road name. Uh, Mr. Scott Black. Good afternoon, Scott. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, board members. Okay, so let's see. The first one we've got is back in uh, July, we identified that we have two streets with common street name of Green Court. Uh, one in Glen Alpine, which you can see in the picture on the left, and then another one is in the Hawksville subdivision off Highway 126. And feeling that in order to clean that up, eliminate possibilities of confusion of that, we've recommended to uh, change the road name in Hawksville to Green Mountain Court. Um, so we sent letters out to the property owners in Hawksville proposing the street name change. Eight of the 11 responded to us. And uh, so we're recommending that you approve this road name change to Green Mountain Court. All right. Thank you, Scott. You gentlemen, you've heard the information. Any questions for Scott before I open the public hearing? See and hear none at this time. I will open the public hearing. Is anyone here tonight to speak to this matter? See and hear none. I'll close the public hearing at this time. Gentlemen, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2024-2. 2-1, approving the road name change to Green Mountain Court, as presented by Scott. All right. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Any other questions? All in favor, signify the uplifted hand. Five to zero. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This brings us now to item number two, also coming from IT. Uh, another road name Mr. change. Name. Mr. Blake. All right. So, I'm not going to move. One more. Okay, so this one is an unnamed private road uh, off of Smoky Creek Road, and um, basically over the years, it is, this property has been subdivided a number of times, and realizing that down here at the, uh, this parcel has recently gone through a subdivision, uh, or is in the process of being subdivided, and road into it to be Daisy Lane, but it connects to this highlighted detail line here. This is the uh, right of way going back in there. That part is unnamed. And so we're uh, sent out some requests to the property owners asking for some proposed road names. Um, we received uh, three suggestions, one being Smoky Hill Road. That was from one parcel. Uh, three parcels came back with Doc Neal Road and then 
uh, three other parcels proposed line shot lane. Um, we have three other property owners that did not respond to the request. Um, all of the road names are um, valid, uh, unused road names, so uh, any of them are okay. Uh, last week, we did receive a call from uh, Richard Neal, Doc Neal, and uh, he told us that he would prefer that the road not be named after him. And so I uh, wanted to bring that to your, to your attention. And uh, so we've got those three names proposed uh, tonight for y'all to choose from. All right, thank you, Scott. Gentlemen, you've heard the information. Any questions for Scott before I open the public hearing? Seeing here tonight, at this time I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to this item tonight? You have some cards, Mr. Chairman. We did have several cards, uh, Tanya and Johnny Hyde, Dana Triplett, and Donna Shirlett. Have any of you folks wish to speak? Okay. Yes. Please state your name, sir, if you will. Uh, I'm Dana Triplett. And the reason, the reason we came here tonight is we didn't want it named after the the doctor, we got nothing against him. We just didn't, we wanted it something besides somebody's name. And uh, and we see he just took his name off. So I guess I don't care which one it is, which one you guys pick, you know. But that was the reason I appeared tonight, just to try to stop his name from being used because I didn't want to name a name. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Just to add, just to, add to that, in when, Dr. Neal contacted us. He did suggest Line Shot Lane as an option. Thanks. Okay. All right. Seeing here no one else speak tonight on this item, I'll close the public hearing and uh, entertain a motion from the board presentation. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adopt ordinance number 2024-22, approving the road name Line Shot Lane. All right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Anyone else? To, all in favor, signify by the uplifted hand. Five to zero. All right, line shot lane it is. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> this brings us tonight to our informal public comments, and this time I'll open the floor for informal public comments. Madam Clerk, did we have anybody to sign up tonight? Not that I'm aware of. Anybody to speak in public comment tonight? All right, seeing here none, I'll close public comments tonight. We'll move on to our consent agenda, item number nine, and I'll recognize our manager, Mr. Epley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Several, several items for consideration, uh, so bear with me as I work through this. <clears throat> Obviously, each of these uh, uh, are in your packet and we're presented in more detail at your pre-agenda meeting. Uh, item one for consideration is from our public uh, school system. Uh, and that was presentation of their quarterly financial data, which is part of the ongoing memorandum. Um, that Those financial statements are in your packet for review. Uh, item two, uh, also from the um, um, uh, Board of Education, is a, an opportunity to uh, uh, approve uh, the declaration of surplus property. Uh, as a reminder, that's a small piece of property uh, on it's zero East Main Street, uh, 0.11 acres, um, and the county is... Uh, the recommendation is to allow that to be deemed surplus and go through the upset bid process. Uh, item three is from our clerk, and that is a request to appoint James Robinson, our EMS director, uh, to our child protection and child fatality prevention team uh, in his new role. New role, excuse me. Item four also from the clerk, and that's a, an appointment and one removal from the Council on Aging. Uh, item five, as you recall, the county received a $350,000 directed grant from the North Carolina General Assembly for uh, broadband expansion. Um, the recommendation is uh, uh, to award that total $99,782 in its Piedmont and Smoky Creek in our landfill. Um, item six. Uh, and seven are both offers um, uh, on county-owned property that have, were obtained through foreclosure to begin the mandatory 10-day upset the bid process. Uh, item six is 0.54 acres 
the offer is $2,960. Item 7 is 0.15 acres. Uh, the offer is $1,000. Both of those are in compliance with your surplus land policy, uh, been reviewed by uh, the tax administrator as well as the county attorney. Item 8 for consideration is to approve uh, an item that we talked about last month and the month before with cognitive connection to administrative recovery court. Uh, you've appropriated money from uh, opioid settlement dollars to fund that through June. This simply puts performance requirements in place that they have to report back to the county on a monthly basis on the performance of recovery court as far as number of participants and sobriety rate and, and so forth. Uh, item number nine. Uh, is a request to uh, approve a, uh, a three-year agreement with Eagle View Software, as we've talked about. That is, uh, adds some operability to our GIS function for a, a, um, uh, different views and lenses. They would fly and have those, those optics posted. Um, we think that that's going to make our tax appraisal process much more efficient. It also comes with a layering software that shows uh, any obscurities to what our, our sketches are in our tax software. So we think that that has a, long, a tremendous amount of long-term operational savings and efficiency improvements. Uh, item 10 is the capital project ordinances for animal services in the EMS space. Item 11 is the collection report from the tax department for October 2024. Uh, item 12 is your monthly release and refund report from the tax department for October 2024. Uh, item 13 for consideration and in your packet. Um, uh, Ed Phillips presented the financials for the uh, end of Q3, September 30, 2024, from our Tourism Development Authority. Item 14 is a proclamation uh, declaring December the 3rd, 2024, as Burke County Nonprofit Day, um, and making that uh, proclamation considered. Item 15 is from the Community College, Western Piedmont Community College, and it's a proclamation declaring November 17th through the 23rd uh, as Apprenticeship Week. Item 16 also from Western Piedmont Community College. They too presented their Q3 financial data at your pre-agenda meeting. That is in your packet. And then finally, the item that was added um, uh, uh, for the courthouse project, which has already, the, the project uh, has been uh, approved. The scope has been approved as a reminder. That is um, the basement of the courthouse has not been used in some time. It's been largely vacant. Uh, this will be moving the district attorney's office to the bottom floor. It'll be adding one courtroom, uh, and it'll be expanding the clerk's um, um, circulation area. Uh, we think extending the life of that building for some time. It also has some uh, mechanical improvements to the HVAC chiller and boiler. Um, the, the, the board has already uh, uh, considered the appropriation as well as the scope of the project. You've awarded the contract to uh, in a joint venture between Holland and Hamrick and Beam construction under a design build procurement model. Um, uh, we were unsure when the final subcontractor tabulations would come in. That, that happened late, and that's what's um, 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 teed up this guaranteed maximum price, which is the final component. So it's, it's largely a formality in, in the process, but asking the board to consider this GMP so that they can uh, begin that work. All right. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Let me make one clarification on item number two. Uh, in the uh, packet, it says acceptance or rejection of offer to purchase surplus property. And we did discuss that during our bridge in the meeting. And uh, we just chose to, uh, uh, we agreed to reject uh, any offer to purchase that surplus property from the Board of Education. So uh, just as a matter of clarification on that item. Hearing that information and uh, the information reviewed from the manager, I would entertain a motion on the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda with the one amendment to uh, item number two. Thank you, Mr. Burns. All those in favor signify by uplifting hand. It's five to zero. This brings us to item number 10, items for decision. We do have one <clears throat> item to consider tonight. This will come from our clerk, appointments and reappointments to the Burke County Planning Board. Madam Clerk. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, this is a, a three-part request to make um, some removals and some appointments to the Burke Planning Board. Um, the first action is to remove Michael Colterra and Richard Evie from the official roster for the Burke County Planning Board and thank them for the service to 
for their community. Uh, Mr. Coltero was no longer interested in serving, uh, although he had served for a, a good number of years, and Mr. Evie has served the maximum number of terms allowed. <coughs> The next item is to uh, make an appointment or reappointment to seat number four, which represents the West, to complete the remainder of a three-year term ending September 30th, 2026. Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven applications in your packet. Um, I'd be happy to read those if needed. And then the uh, last request is to appoint point someone to C6, also representing the West, to complete the remainder of a three-year term ending September 30th, 2026, for the Burke County Planning Board. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Gentlemen, I'll first entertain a motion to remove Michael Cotera and Richard Evey from the roster of the Planning Board and thank them for their service. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Mulvey. All those in favor signify the uplifted hand. It's five to zero. All right, that'll bring us over to uh, the two board seats to fill. As Madam Clerk indicated, there are uh, seven applications and both seats are from the West. So uh, at this time, we'll take seat number four and I would entertain a motion for seat number four, or a nomination rather. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to appoint Gregory Smith to seat number four West to complete the remainder of a three-year term ending September the 30th, 2026 on the Burke County Planning Board. Thank you, Commissioner Burns. I have a nomination for Gregory Smith. Are there any other nominations for this seat? Seeing here none, I'll close nominations. All those in favor of seating Gregory Smith to seat number four of the Planning Board, please indicate by the uplifted hand. That is five to zero. We'll move on now to seat number six, also representing the West. Uh, with the exception of Gregory Smith, you have six names there of applicants. I'll open the floor for nominations for seat number six. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to appoint Damon Patton to seat number six, West, to complete the remainder of three-year term <coughs> ending September 30th, 2026 on the Burke County Planning Board. All right, thank you, Mr. Burns. Any other nominations for this seat? Seeing here none, I'll close nominations. All those in favor of seating Mr. Patton to seat number six of the Planning Board, please send the cape by the uplifted hand. That's five to zero. All thank right. you, Jillian. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> All right, this brings us to reports and comments tonight. First uh, item to report will be from our General Services Monthly Operation Report. This will come from Mark Delahan, our General Services Director. Good evening, Mark. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'd like to uh, begin by thanking you for this opportunity to give you a quick overview of uh, General Services and what all we uh, are responsible for. Um, First slide shows our breakdown of our number of our employees. Administration consists of myself, an assistant director, and two accounting technicians. Facility maintenance as a total has eight full-time employees, one part-time, which is a grounds person. Uh, the water and sewer department has six full-time employees. Two of those are uh, billing clerks, administrative assistants. Uh, solid waste has 21 full-time employees, 27 part-time. Most of those are, of course, convenience site workers. Um, of course, as I said, I'm over three different departments, so we're going to take one at a time here, beginning with facility maintenance. Our uh, facility maintenance department consists of, again, eight full-time employees, one part-time, a supervisor, five maintenance technicians, two grounds maintenance technicians, and a part-time. Um, of the five maintenance staff, we uh, have some with various expertise that have allowed us to save a lot of money. We have a uh, locksmith, a gentleman with a considerable amount of plumbing experience, one with electrical experience, and all of them have some general construction experience, which again has greatly reduced our need to uh, utilize outside contractors. And if all of you probably sure, it's hard to find a general contractor these days. Um, for example, we uh, uh, have just an example, we have 17 backup generators that require semi-annual inspection. Each time they get inspected, we're supplied with a list of uh, needed repairs. 
One of my uh, gentlemen has the uh, expertise to go through that list of needed repairs and knock most of it out, saving, we say, thousands of dollars on just that one thing, and I'm very uh, happy to have him, of course. Um, some of the projects we've recently done, of course, uh, this is the EMS billing office that uh, we remodeled and, and created for the um, recently adopted uh, EMS billing folks. Uh, this is a DSS restroom facility. It may not sound like much, but uh, up until the creation of this, this used to be a kitchen. And uh, the folks working downstairs, I believe there's like uh, 40 of them, they had uh, to go upstairs to use the bathroom. So uh, again, may not sound like much. We also included a shower here because uh, with the Child Protective Services, sometimes they have some overnight gifts. And uh, that's uh, going to be kind of fit for them to have a wash as well. Um, this is a project we took on for the health department. We remodeled some exam rooms in Colab. Uh, excuse me. What is this? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, this is again the uh, health department uh, medical lab. Uh, they are very happy with that. I'm sure Danny would attest to uh, it really. Uh, built up the morale of his staff and being able to have a modern facility to work out of. Um, this, as you recently remember, is the 201 Avery building. I'd like to mention this This was a great acquisition. Uh, adult Services had uh, DSS, Adult Services had over 20 employees working out of space for five employees. Now they have this facility, uh, this part of the construction process. This is a uh, overview of uh, the uh, cubicles that were all ordered, and this is the actual final outcome. Uh, each one has their own space now, doesn't have to work from home or share an office with anybody else. This, this was, a, a, again, a great acquisition by the county. So oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Try that. All right. Um, this is the sheriff's office. Um, I'd like to mention the sheriff's office, of course, was built in 1993. What you're looking at here, this is uh, wallpaper that it was peeling off the wall. It had never had an upgrade in uh, all those years since 1993. Do you want me to turn this off now? Nope. Okay. Anyways, since 1993, it never had an upgrade. So uh, this was quite a project. Uh, they took all the wallpaper off and painted the offices. This is some of the flooring that was there. As you can see, it's ripped and heavily stained. Uh, this is the uh, after product here. Uh, put all laminate flooring, painted the offices, and uh, I'm sure the sheriff will attest to it, even uh, increased morale amongst his staff, having a nice facility. Amen. Amen. There you go. Nice facility to work out of. Again, it was much needed. It, it was a, a great project. Turned out really well. Um, some of the other things General Services does, of course, we handle the voting machines. Uh, this uh, involves 31 precincts. Come election day, we got five trucks uh, staffed of 10, which is everybody from facility maintenance and water sewer delivering voting machines to those 31 precincts uh, using the five trucks and the trailers, if you remember, proving that purchase, which is, again, was a, a great move. On, uh, and thank you for your support on that made it a lot easier. But uh, they, again, come 7 o'clock and the polls close, they're running around until midnight collecting boat machines. Uh, this, of course, I don't know if you noticed the Operation Green Light, uh, but it came out really good. Each year we try to buy a few more lights and decorate a new building. This year we focused on the uh, foothills, which I felt was kind of the gateway coming into Morganton, and that, that looked really good. Uh, and we're really proud of that. Um, here's, of course, the courthouse. We upgraded the lighting there for this year. It, uh, and the old courthouse and the uh, Veterans Memorial downtown by the courthouse. Uh, now moving on to water sewer. Uh, we have a uh, water sewer manager, which was recently hired. Uh, his uh, first day was Monday, so I'm glad for that. That's been a, a difficult void to have. Uh, we have two administrative assistants or billing clerks and three water sewer technicians. Uh, the, these. Uh, Everything we have requires a certification. The state, uh, we get inspected on a regular basis. All the paperwork that gets filled out each month and uh, reported to the state requires somebody certified to sign off on all that stuff. Uh, we have three different water systems. Each one has a monthly report connected to it. 
and uh, then the sewer system, when we get inspected, they want to see all our maintenance records, including mowing, mowing and uh, site visits to the sewer stations, et cetera, et cetera. But not just any employee can do that. It has to be a certified person to sign off on that. When I got here, there were nobody had any certifications since I've been here. We got uh, Brian Tart, the assistant director. He's now certified in our recently hired uh, water sewer operations manager. Also has all the needed certifications to operate uh, both our water and our sewer system. So this is a big plus. Um, uh, water system components. We have 150 miles of water line ranging from 2 to 12 inch. Uh, we have four water storage tanks ranging all the way from 50 up to 250,000 gallons uh, for total storage capability of 700,000 gallons. Uh, I'll mention this came in really handy when we had our recent storm, we had power outages. Uh, one of the things we did, we were able to top off our tanks and when the power went out, we had full tanks and that was able to maintain pressure and supply our folks with water throughout the duration of the storm until we get power restored. Um, each water booster station has two pumps with six of those. There's two hydro tanks. If you don't know what a hydro tank is, something where we use to supply water. It looks kind of like a uh, large propane tank. Top half's filled with air, bottom half's full with water. That pressure bladder tank or whatever supplies uh, water to the, like the very top of Middle Springs Mountain where the tank, even though it's up there, those people would have no pressure without a hydro tank. Uh, we have, uh, throughout our system, we have 386 fire hydrants that need to be looked after, and we have a total of, Burke County has a total of 2,720 metered connections or customers. Uh, this is a map of the water system. It's hard to read, but I'll simply explain that most of our water system, we have three of them, the airport road his system and the uh, Omara system and what I call the Burke South system, which is everything south of I-40, which is the largest part of our system. Uh, let me go back to that. The uh, uh, airport row system has two entry points where we buy water from Longview. The Omara, although it only has 23 customers, only has one entry point. It has some major industry on there and it's uh, responsible for sales of about uh, over a million gallons each month with uh, Omara being a wet industry. Um, and then the Burke South system actually has four entry points. Again, this proved very beneficial as uh, we had the power outages throughout some of the things and the city of Morganton didn't have any water. We have two on this side uh, where we buy water from city of Morganton. One in the middle, we buy it from Valdez and one on the far end in Hildebrand where we buy water from Eichard Water. We were able to flow water all the way from uh, the Hildebrand area all the way back to Morganton to maintain the supply throughout the power outages. Again, it's a well-designed system. So, uh, This is, uh, uh, shows what a SCADA is. Our, a SCADA is actually a fancy acronym for uh, system. Let's see. Fancy acronym for uh, system control and uh, data acquisition, or excuse me, supervisory control and data acquisition. This is how our pumps and our tanks communicate to each other. Uh, this is a screenshot of when I log in to uh, find out what's going on with my tanks. You see each of the tanks and their water elevation. Each tank has a set point in it that tells uh, when it gets to a certain point, which we uh, designate that point. It tells that pump to come on, tops that tank off to a certain point. And uh, in addition to uh, the pump controls, each of those uh, tanks have an alarm on them to where if it gets below a certain point, the pumps are running trying to fill, that tells us we got a water leak. And uh, uh, all these are set up to uh, call us out in the middle of the night to an on-call phone that is manned by our four maintenance staff 24-7, uh, 365 days a year, 366 days if it's a leap year. Uh, this is uh, the sewer system and some of its components. We have a total of four pump stations, 19 miles of gravity, 12 miles of force main. Uh, you may have heard it say, well, Burke County only has 217 connections, but we're also a pass through the town of Hildebrand, Conley Springs, Rutherford College, and town of Rodhis. So our total system carries, uh, supplies uh, collection sewer surfaces for uh, over 1,100 uh, residents. 
This is a map of our sewer system, which is pretty much broken down into uh, two segments. The one you'll see on the right of the screen, that all flows to the city of Hickory. The one you see on the left of the screen all flows to Valdez. So we, uh, are, we have a meter at each end of each line where it uh, calculates the flow and we get a bill from Valdez and a bill from uh, city of Hickory for the amount of flow that flows through there. And as I said, we're connected to the town of Conley Springs. Although this isn't our system, I thought this would give you an idea of uh, all the sewer system that's connected to ours that we're responsible for making sure it gets to the treatment plant. This, of course, is Conley Springs, Rutherford College, and this is the town of Hildebrand. The town of Hildebrand has five main entry points where it connects with our system and three smaller ones. This is an overhead view of the Indian Hills sewer station and the Island Creek station, just to give you an idea of uh, what those look like. Uh, this is the inside at Indian Hills, uh, and this is the inside at Ecker Creek, our newest pump station. If you can see the difference between those two, this one's got a little wear and tear. This one is brand new. That's what it should look like. Um, next slide, uh, just mentioned some things we've uh, taken care of over the last year. Of course, uh, the one on the right is just a basic water line repair where uh, when uh, one of those tanks alarms you and that's what you have to end up digging out and getting into. Uh, the other one is a fire hydrant. I'll mention when I got here uh, three and a half years ago, there were 40 hydrants that were non-operable, more or less had been hit by either a car or a DOT contractor. I'd be happy to say now that all 386 are operational. Um, this is a, uh, that right there tied off to a tree is a sewer line of ours that had eroded due to uh, heavy flows through that creek and washed the dirt away and exposed it. And when I got here, we had that sewer line that was tied off to a, a tree like that, so it didn't uh, bust out, but uh, that's where we got it repaired. So it looks like it's very sustainable now and uh, we shouldn't have any problems out of that in the future. There were four of those locations that needed that attention. Uh, now, this is a good one. You'll see that uh, this is our revenues for the water sewer fund. This is uh, past year, uh, fiscal year starting 21, 22, 23. And as you'll notice that uh, expenses were uh, outdoing our revenues. But if you'll notice the most recent corner, quarter, uh, 24 projected, uh, we have uh, turned the corner on that. And we're in a position where our uh, revenues finally outpace our expenses which is where it should be. Uh, some of the other things we have upcoming, we'll be doing in, to further that revenue projection, a water meter change out. Um, most of our water, water meters are about uh, 15 years old, uh, and uh, studies show that if a 15 year old water meter or something of that age only is measuring about 90% accurate, and uh, when you bill, we typically bill about 10 million gallons every month. So that's a lot of water that we're not getting billed that when we do this water meter change out, we're gonna capture that. So I'm anxious for that. Uh, next, uh, you'll see Indian, Indian Hills uh, pump station stabilization. This is more or less a project upcoming to uh, increase the elevation of the pump station. Every time we have a heavy rain, uh, we end up pumping rainwater and it gets metered and we end up having to pay for treatment of rainwater. When that project's through, we'll have the station up to an elevation where it won't suffer from heavy rains like it does now. Uh, you probably uh, heard talked about the AIA study that's coming up. Uh, a lot of the components of that are going to uh, uh, address some of the needed repairs and recommended repairs along with a rate study, and that should be a capital improvements plan. And... Uh, that should be concluding uh, in March or April of this year. That's on schedule. Uh, now on to solid waste. Solid waste has uh, 21 full-time employees, 27 part-time, most of which are convenience site workers. Uh, we have the C&D landfill and six convenience sites. Uh, it's, uh, solid waste is pretty much broken down into two separate components, being the, the landfill operations, and collections, which would be the convenient site. This is uh, strictly landfill operations where we have a supervisor, mechanic, administrative assistant, which handles billing, a uh, full-time scale house operator and a part-time, uh, eight heavy equipment operators, which uh, operate both the landfill and the transfer station, 
and a part-time convenience site attendant. This is uh, uh, the landfill itself, and it shows the different cells. Um, let's see. Phases one and two, which, uh, let me see. Phases one and two up in here are closed. And, excuse me. Phases one and two right here are closed, and we're currently working on number four. Um, at the end of each week, the C&D received has to be uh, covered and compacted with 12 inches of dirt. So when we are uh, covering the one cell here, we're actually working on cell number five. We're getting that dirt from cell number five to create. Uh, so when cell number four gets full, we'll have, be ready to have uh, number five permitted. Um, this shows what the long-term lifespan of our uh, landfill is. Uh, and uh, what did I have here? We have uh, plenty of capacity. If, if our current rate of uh, C&D collection goes, we, we've got 120 years left. Uh, this storm has changed that considerably. We've like doubled our C&D intake due to the storm, but once that gets back to normal again, if we strictly uh, continue just with C&D, we'll have plenty of years of capacity there in the remaining cells. Uh, this is our transfer station. Uh, this is uh, some of the deficiencies of our transfer station. And uh, it, it handles uh, thousands of tons e each day. I lost where I'm at here, so forgive me, but... Uh, and uh, it, it's in need, ha, has some deficiencies are going to need to be addressed soon, one way or another. We're looking at other options. Solid Waste Collections Department has a supervisor, heavy equipment mechanic, and uh, two solid waste transfer station drivers. The two solid waste transfer drivers what, what was recently hired and uh, as part of our bringing in-house, the hauling of our own waste to calls well. I'll get to a slide in a minute. That has saved us a, a lot of money. The four solid waste drivers you see there, they look after the convenience sites, collecting the household waste and all the recyclables to the recycling center. This is a map showing all our convenience sites and their location. As you can see, they're pretty equally spread out throughout the county. Uh, and uh, I've learned that uh, Highway 126 is our busiest followed by uh, Highway 18 and uh, Highway 64. Uh, as you know, we recently uh, cut the ribbon at two new convenience sites. This is actually the old one of Jonas Ridge, and this is the old one at East Burke. Both of those have a single entrance and exit. Uh, Jonas Ridge, actually, they had to walk up some steps to deposit their trash, as you may remember. Uh, this was very congested. This is the East Burke site. This is the new and improved site there at Jonas Ridge. And, uh, of course, this is the one at uh, East Burke. They, these are well designed, going to carry us well into the future. I've heard nothing but absolutely fabulous comments from the residents and those that are using these facilities. So this was a good move on your part. Uh, in addition to these new sites, we included some signage, new signage, which has been really helpful in uh, telling people what goes where instead of having to... When I got here, they would write on a side of a box with a spray paint, glass. Well, now we uh, <laughs> have a sign that looks a little more professional. Um, this right here is, uh, we, we've started hauling our own cardboard and we've installed uh, compactors to that effort. Previously, we were paying, outsourcing that to the tune of uh, 160, excuse me, $166,000 a year and uh, hauling our own cardboard. Not only will we not be paying that 166,000, but we'll also get some revenue from the cardboard. And again, this has been well received from the uh, residents uh, and, and along the line of uh, revenue. This is uh, our landfill and uh, the fees that come across scale, as you can see again, the trend where uh, disposal costs were uh, outdoing the uh, tipping fee coming through the scale house. And recently, in the most recent quarter uh, of July, August and September, we've reversed that trend as well. We expect that to uh, continue. Um, that alone on that graph shows, uh, the um, graph on the right shows where we've reduced the operational cost uh, by $300,000 and increased the revenues to $200,000.
So that's $500,000 in one quarter. So uh, I expect the future looks pretty bright for solid waste and water sewer. Um, this last slide, of course, is long-term projections for solid waste. Our, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we haul 66 tons annually. We were contracting out the hauling of that. Uh, we reduced our cost by $20 per ton for a total savings of uh, $1,320,000 annually. Uh, again, the startup cost, although $660,000, the ongoing operational savings is going to uh, be $1,066,000 annually. Uh, the cardboard compaction alone, uh, bringing it in-house, there, there was, uh, there's no real operational cost to that, but the savings is, uh, again, 166000 in contract avoidance annually. Um, this I'd also like to mention. If you uh, remember, every meeting I'd hear you all got calls about trash up and down the road. Well, uh, thanks to a recently signed contract with Gold Star, um, I brought, put that up there 50 years ago in Burke. I think Johnny remembers mentioning that at a meeting. I saw that in the paper and uh, no more. I, I don't know about y'all, but uh, you probably haven't gotten the calls you used to get about trash up and down the road. Well, that's largely due to our contract with the Gold Star and Ashley, the uh, county manager's uh, administrative assistant has headed that up and done a great job with that. Um, any questions? All right, thank you, Mark. Great report. Uh, any questions for Mark on his report? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment or two. Being the old guy here for 13 years, Jeff, you'll remember every six months we had a new general services manager. <laughs> the greatest thing we ever done was hire Mark Delahunt. He has brought us out of the dark, dark ages into the light, and those numbers right up there prove what this man can do for us. And no, I don't get the trashy calls anymore. <laughs> Trash was my number one thing, and Mark and helped me. They got me a bathroom out. at the convenience site. <laughs> Mark helped me on that. Yeah, bathrooms at the convenience sites. So, Mark, I just want to extend my appreciation to you because it was a scary thing when we come in here every six months not knowing who was going to be standing in that spot. And there was never, never any good news. But we only had good news since you came aboard. Three years, it took you a long time to get where you're at. And I know the future is going to be bright for us here in Burke County. Those graphs tell it all, you know, where we were spending the money and now we've got money coming in to take care of the problems that we had before. Our heart goes out to you. I thank you for everything that you've done. You've been an asset to this county. And I just want to echo what uh, Johnny said to you, Mark. You've done a tremendous job. Um, you don't like being in the spotlight, I understand, but great presentation. Um, and, you know, as Johnny said, you know, I haven't been around as long as they have, but I remember the problems we were having even starting even eight years ago when we were still having turnover. And then, you know, even talking about, oh, should we be in the water and sewer business because we're, we're just losing so much money. There's no, we could, you were having trouble finding a way to stop bleeding. And obviously, um, with the county manager and his new team and you, uh, have all worked together to do that and uh, our enterprise funds are actually making money so you know it's uh it's it's a strange feeling and so that and then of course that's going to save taxpayers a huge amount of money Absolutely. because if you're saving a million dollars on that one enterprise fund that's one cent sales tax and so you know there's there are ways to uh, get diversified and save and get those savings so i just want to once again thank you and thank you staff this is great especially our last meeting to see this positive positive outcome so uh, anyway thank you I don't have a question just comment thank you very much You're welcome. Um, looking at the information that you shared there and, and thinking about a presentation we had earlier tonight it, it's huge that we've been able to cut the turnover rate in this county from north of 30 percent to around nine ten percent it, it's the cause of efforts like this that we were able to do that and I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to the county manager and your staff. Uh, the future is indeed bright. I look forward to it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say I thank him and his staff for their always professional service. And uh, I'm glad you're a member of our team, Mark. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, in, in closing, let me, let me just say he mentioned the turnover. Uh, I had an employee 
turned in his notice about a week ago, and within a week he was calling me up, hey, can I get that job back? Um, I know of three employees right now that have uh, left county employment and within weeks wanted their jobs back uh, for whatever reason. But this, I remember the first workshop and y'all put all your little dots on them being an employer of choice. I, I just like to say that's not just a slogan, it's working. It is working. Uh, the other thing uh, all about advancing is I shared some of that information. Uh, it's not just a slogan, it, it's happening. Um, and it wouldn't happen without support of your board and again, our county manager. He, he's been great, great to work for, work with. Uh, he got in here, he saw those enterprise funds and the condition and said that wasn't acceptable. He, he not only just told me that wasn't acceptable, he dug in there and helped me find a solution. And, and that was huge, that was huge. And I'd like to thank you all for your support and the county manager, thank you. Thank you, Mark, great mm -hmm. report. Appreciate all the work uh, that- <laughs> you want it upside the head or the back? Or... <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mark. All right, this brings us to item number two. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to accept the report as presented. Thank you, sir. All those in favor signify the uplifted hand. Five zero. Thank you. <clears throat> item number two reports and comments tonight. Uh, open the floor to receive reports and comments. Um, start down there with uh, Ms. Martin. No comments, thank you. Mr. Attorney. No comments from me, thank you. Madam Clerk. I do have just a couple, if you'll indulge me. <clears throat> Scott and Johnny, it's been an honor and privilege to work alongside both of you during your time on the board. Your dedication, leadership, and unwavering commitment to serving that Burke County has been inspiring. And um, I'd just like to say for myself and on behalf of the entire Drone family that we wish you all the best in the future endeavors and that we look forward to seeing the continued difference that you'll make wherever your paths lead. Uh, Mr. Manager. Why don't I have prepared comments, but um... But I, I, too, am indebted to both of you for your leadership and your guidance. I've enjoyed uh, uh, working for you and working with you. Uh, I'm, um, it, it's, just, it's, just, it's just good to see people give back, right? And, and that's meant a lot to me and my family. And you made a tremendous impact on the community in which you live. And I, I just simply tip my hat and say thank you and uh, tremendous respect for what you've done. Mr. Smith. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, <clears throat> again, thank Mr. Leonard, Kevin Leonard, for coming up here to be with us and celebrate these two gentlemen over here and for everything, all the nice things you said about our county. And maybe I hope we can just keep that up and keep a close relationship with you all down there. I hope all of you all out there and uh, have a happy Thanksgiving, a safe Thanksgiving, and a safe holiday season. Thank you. Uh, I got a lot to say, but I'm going to save a lot of it for Friday night. I, I just, uh, I do want to say thank you for your mentorship, your leadership, your dedication. Um, there's a lot I want to say, but I, I just, I, like I said, I'll save some of it. But I, I do want to thank uh, Executive Director Leonard for coming up. Um, Commissioner Carswell and I were blessed to be able to go down this past Thursday and Friday and work on the legislative bills process with the association. It was uh, my first time doing that, and I've got to say it was a well-oiled machine. Uh, we went through the process. I didn't think we would finish in two days when I looked at all the goals that were laid out before us, but it just it clicked right along. And I will say the final product uh, in every category I'm very proud of. So. Thank you, citizens of Burke County, for letting me serve, and thank you, board, for uh, your vote in the last meeting to make me the voting delegate. I appreciate that very much. Mr. Mowey. Just thank you for the kind words. Y'all are very special to me. Y'all really are. Thank you. Mr. Carr. I could probably say a lot of words, 
for the last 13 years, but uh, we'll save that for, for later on. But um, I do want to announce to everybody that the lights are up at the Carswell house. They're not, they're not on yet. It only took me and Peyton two months to get them up. The preacher's been driving by telling me to hurry up, hurry up. So uh, we'll turn those on on Thanksgiving Day. And as we go into the Thanksgiving season, uh, I, I don't want us to forget that treat our fellow man the best that we can. That's what we're here for. God put us here to take care of people. I do want to remember Danny Scalise. We heard the sad news about his mother and it's not good news and he's on his way to West Virginia. So remember Danny and his, his travels up there. I've worked with some of the finest people in the world uh, right here in this county. Worked through two county managers. I said I wasn't gonna say anything, but I worked through two county managers uh, and gained, gained a, a breadth of experience from those two. It, it's been a lot of fun. But I guess uh, my experience down at the County Commissioner Association, I didn't know what it was until I got there. And there's no politics down there, guys. There's just no, it's, it, we call it County Green. And Kevin and I came up with a, with a motto for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. We do good stuff. And we do good stuff here in Burke County. It's what it's all about, serving your fellow man. And um, like I say, I'm humbled. I've been, I've been truly blessed. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Carswell. All right, let me give you a few courtesy reminders. Uh, youth groups who would be willing to come and lead in our pledge and our commission meetings. We would remind you to sign up for that on our county's website. And if you know some folks that might like to come, Please share that. We'd love to have our young people come and be a part of our meeting. And I would ask you to continue to spay and neuter your pets, foster or adopt a pet at our Burke County Animal Services Center. Uh, if you're going to the trash dump, we've talked a lot about trash tonight. Uh, we don't want to see all that trash on the road, do we, Mark? Uh, no, sir. Just cover up your trash on your pickup truck. Uh, take care of that. Don't litter pickup trash. Uh, we do have a community beautification project going on. You can go on our website and uh, let us know if you see an area that needs attention. We'd love to know about it. We'll try our best to, to work on it. Our county offices will be closed November the 27th and 28th in observance of Thanksgiving. And with that, I'll turn it over to Madam Clerk for our vacancy announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen of the audience. We have the following opportunities for citizens to be involved in county boards and committees. The Adult Care and Nursing Home Community Advisory Committees, City of Morganton, Board of Adjustment and Planning Board for the ETJ areas, Burke County Public Health Advisory Board, Hickory Regional Planning Commission, Drexel Planning Board for the ETJ alternate, the Burke County Planning Board, particularly um, in the eastern part of the county, Partners Behavioral Health Management's Human Rights Committee and the Blue Ridge Community Action. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> I got Partners Health. I said that. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That brings us to item number 13, closed session. We do not have a need for a closed session tonight. And so that brings us to the item uh, of the evening, adjournment. I'll entertain a motion, gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, if you all allow me, I'd like to make the last motion to adjourn. All right. Thank you, Mr. Carswell. We've heard the motion. All those in favor signify by the uplifted hand. That is five to zero. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here tonight. Have a good evening. <laughs>